Good to see you. Uh, wasn't sure if you were going to be able to tune in today with the uh, busy week that we've had, uh, all the videos that have come out as we celebrate Holy Week. Uh, wasn't sure if the care of the world might start be uh, pushing things aside today and you'd have to focus on other things. It's a pleasure to have you with us. And uh, as we celebrate Good Friday, uh, probably the happiest sad day in the Christian calendar. Or is it the saddest happy day? Uh, the church has always been a little conflicted ab about what that means, uh, Good Friday. So as, as we look at this, we have a tendency to feel kind of like Charles Dickens, to paraphrase him. It is the best of days. It is the worst of days. We have joy and we have sadness at, at what was done. Um, I've chalked up easily over 55 uh, Easter Good Friday messages in my life, uh, multiple Christian movies that have depicted uh, the suffering that uh, Christ went through. And after a while, you kind of start going, okay, yeah, I've heard this, and I appreciate it, and all of that stuff. But sometimes we need to kind of step back and take a fresh look at things. And that's kind of what I'm going to do today as we look at uh, what this event entailed. Uh, 
as we look at it, we have a tendency to think day from sunrise to sunset, and this was actually a continuation on our calendar, how we measure days from Thursday. Uh, Thursday was an interesting day, packed full of uh, things that uh, affect us today in our Christian walk. The Last Supper, uh, going into the Passover, um, the prayer for the disciples and uh, that Christ gave, the washing of the feet, and as they're jockeying for position about who is greatest and all of that stuff, uh, the Lord of the universe humbled himself and knelt before them to perform a slave's task. And it wasn't until it was halfway in process that they clued in what was going on. Um, it was the betrayal by a close companion. It was the last time the 12 of them would ever be together in such a fashion. Uh, they went to the garden, and which Jesus asked some of his closest disciples to stand watch with him while he prayed because his heart was breaking. And uh, they couldn't stay awake. Multiple times he came to them. And uh, finally, when the ultimate betrayal did occur, he said, rise up. Uh, he was taken in front of a sham court that didn't even involve Republicans or Democrats. Uh, Political alliances were cemented in the process of uh, condemning him to death. He was drug out, marched outside the city, uh, beaten, and crucified between two thieves. And again, the movies and our own reading can portray how horrific of an event this was. And watching all those that claimed support and allegiance to you flee and leave you pretty much alone at that time. Uh, what does, what drives someone to make that kind of sacrifice? Several years ago, uh, I stepped back and kind of evaluated my Christian walk. I looked at what my life was. I looked at what I believed, why I believed it. Was it based in scripture? Uh, was it based on sound reasoning and, and analysis of the uh, scripture? and Or is it just something that I'd kind of been taught growing up and had accepted it? And so one of the things that had come to me in this process and that I looked at closely, and I'd even used this term quite a bit, and that was it was love that held Jesus on the cross. And this may be a little upsetting to some, but... Me personally, my belief on this, that it was obedience that held Jesus to the cross. And I want to just talk about that briefly, what that looks like. And when Jesus was in the garden, when he was facing such turmoil, internal strife, that he was sweating drops of blood, and he asked the Lord not to strengthen him for what light ahead. Not for the love of those around him that was driving him to do this, but he prayed to have this taken from him, that it be removed. And ultimately he said, but not my will, but yours. Um, when you read this and look at this point in time, you have the very strong feeling wasn't driven by love. There was a deep desire not to do what was being asked of him. But it was honoring and obedience to his father's will that he said, I will do it. Because he had the opportunity through the whole process to pull the plug and not, and not go through this. And we get a sense of that when he is on the cross, when he is being and had been mocked by the thieves on each side of him, that he was in the deepest anguish when he cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And the thing that had been driven home to me as I looked at this wasn't the pain of what he was going through, though immense. Uh, the individuals on each side of him had mocked him while they were going through relatively the same level of pain. He had been beaten. We have no record of them being uh, beaten and stripped of skin like Christ had. Um, but they'd also been having this hanging over their head for a longer time period. The pain of crucifixion, the Romans did it all the time. 
it was a spectator sport almost to them, thousands at a time kind of thing. So the pain though immense and personal was usually a multi-day process. Uh, the two thieves on each side were going to have their legs broken later in the day so they could uh, suffocate quicker than what was going on. There was something else happening and I think if we look back at it and what Jesus was calling out and crying out at that time was that the closest relationship that has ever happened. We can't even imagine how close this relationship is. We know how close we can get to one another. But when it comes to Christ the Son and God the Father, there is something that we just can't even get our hands on this side of the veil. So when Jesus took that sin upon him, God was required to turn his back. And for those of us that have had a ruptured relationship with friends, with a family member, maybe even a parent that this has occurred, that hurt is very deep and it is lasting. And we have, um, we carry it to some degree, even though it may scar over, there's still a scar. And when you bump that scar, it still hurts. It still reminds you of the injury that was done. And when you had been in a perfect relationship and suddenly that was severed and suddenly you were despised because of something you did to honor the Lord. It, uh, I can't grasp what that meant. I can't grasp that feeling of loss of that feeling of abandonment. And it's interesting, I saw a TED talk once where an individual who studied end of life issues and spent a lot of time in hospice interviewing thousands and thousands of people, he said the interesting thing is people will approach death with ease and grace if they were significant in one other person's life. Just that act of being connected with someone said through this traumatic time period uh, helped ease them through that. And here we have a situation where uh, we can't even understand the significance and that was taken away. That is, that to me is what the Christ suffered when he took our sins. And with that, it gave us the freedom that we could now go, Abba, Father. Uh, have a blessed day and have a fabulous Easter holiday.